right. This is probably the one that was on fire. <laughs> no, pretty good. Really? Yeah. It kind of got brought to my attention by a assistant coach that was at Georgia State when I was there. He ended up being the head coach uh, at Eastern Kentucky University. He kind of hit me up and was like, "Hey, like, I think you'll you still have a fifth year of eligibility left. Have you ever thought about going to Georgia Gwinnett, um, which was an NAI school up the road, which was coached by." Um, Brad Stromdahl, who had like an unbelievable reputation in the area. You know, the minute I talked to him, I had pretty much made up my mind. I mean, it was a really good talk. The Rangers area scout called me and was basically like, listen, like go to Georgia Gwinnett. Um, I can scout you there. All the scouts will still know you in the area. Uh, it's a way easier to get you signed out of a college than it is out of a gym. You know, I kind of wanted to start fresh and it was a great opportunity to do that. And so, yeah, I got in the car and drove back to Atlanta. It was basically just like, well, hey, I have to go back to Georgia and she had to go back to school. I mean, it was both of our senior years, but it was like, I mean, obviously there's so much here. I mean, I, you know, we're not just going to be like, all right, later, you know. So we're like, all right, well, we'll just try the long distance thing. And obviously that was, like a brand new experience for both of us. Obviously trust is a giant thing, but I mean, we're both also so busy. I mean, he's at the field for practically 12 hours a day and I have a full-time job. So I feel like it allows both of us to kind of fully commit to what we're doing in the moment. And then like when we get to be with each other, we're all in. Astros pitcher Forrest Whitley was taken number 17 in the 2016 MLB draft. He's the consensus number one right-handed pitching prospect in all of baseball now. For like my first half season uh, in professional baseball, like I, I was so miserable. We were in Kissimmee, Florida. It was so hot. And then I got called up to Greenville, which was, which was our like advanced rookie affiliate. And, I, and then I was even more miserable because we were staying in a night's end. I would like move rooms like every five days. It was so bad. So I remember like going to that off season, I was like not looking forward to the season at all in 2017. And I like go into spring training. I was just like, oh, this is so terrible. <laughs> so like my introduction to Pro Bowl wasn't good, but like my mindset's changed since then. You know, I had some good people in my ear, like guys that have been through it. And they basically said like, you know, it's all part of it, it'll get better. It was absolutely true. Like since then, like every like level I've been in from low A all the way up to triple A has been, you know, a lot better than rookie ball. Yeah, dude, is this Roosevelt? Yeah, if you keep going down the street, there's like a bunch of paintings like further down near that coffee shop that I was telling y'all about. It's really neat. Um, can we have three orders of steak and eggs, please? I think it's just like a like having a like a pretty like consistent routine like would be the biggest thing. Like I've been trying to like do the same thing like every morning, like prepare myself the same way, just so like it could probably like help me like when I get to the field and like create that have that same process at the field. Because like my routine has been like pretty loose, you know, since I've been in pro ball. It's gotten better, but like it's always been pretty loose. And like, I believe in a process and I believe in a routine, but like you have to have the ability to conform too, because like baseball is one of those sports where it's just like, when the shit hits the fan, it fucking really hits the fan. Uh, and there's a lot of variability in the sport. So you just gotta be able to like, you gotta be like water, man. The exciting thing about it is like the end result could be like something like life changing and like you can really leave a mark. So the monotony sucks, but like also the end result potentially is like legit. So that's like what keeps me going through the monotony. Because, you know, when I get up there, maybe it could be a completely different like mindset, but like I want to just do what's good for the game at the time. Like, and I just want to be myself doing it. And I don't want to have to like push anybody to do it, but I just want to like set the right example and hopefully people will follow me type deal. Which one's better between the Prime Steak Sandwich and the Beverly Hills Club? I'd say the Steak Sandwich is Really? Yeah. Okay, then I'll do that. Okay. And uh, can I do no mushrooms on that, please? Okay, and then that 
yeah, normal right morning. Uh, I'll wake up, and whatever that time is, like I'll lay in bed for like 15 minutes, just laying there, just because I'm like I don't want to get out yet. Uh, so I'll do that, and then I'll get up, go brush my teeth, um, do whatever I need to do, put my hair up, and then uh, I'll go out to the living room. All of our roommates will be out there. We'll be hanging out, and then uh, we'll start cooking breakfast. So we'll make a big spread, and eggs, bacon, smoothies, oatmeal, everything, bagels, waffles, and bust it open. And then, you know, one by one, we'll all head to the field after we're done hanging out, and from there our day starts. And, like, that's where, like, certain routines, I feel like you don't really need a routine half the time. Because it's like there will be days where, you know, you go to a minor league field, you bus gets in late because it broke down, and you're not able to do everything to an exact, like, you hit traffic and you don't get to hit on the field so you like you just figure out everything that you need to do like and get it done rather than like if I don't do this routine I'm not ready so like there'll be days where you're like I don't even need to hit the cage I just need to relax go get my body loose and go into the game and there are other days where like I need to hit in the cage a little longer and like really feel some stuff out but like like every guy's flexible but I don't ever want to get to such a regimented routine that I can't feel like I can perform without it. Biggers has hit number six for Arkansas. Biggers McGee. throwing in one motion. He got Holcomb at first base. Line drive up the middle. Once the fall hit and we had a bunch of meetings, uh, most of the teams would talk to, honestly, most of our players. and. Um, we just knew from the start we, we had a deep team and we knew that, we knew that most of us were going to get a chance to go to the next level that year. So he played that weekend. They had a weekend series. We were pretty sure he wasn't going to go Monday. And then Tuesday was the next rounds up to 10. I, realistically, I, I know he wanted to go a little bit higher. Well, everyone wants to go a little bit higher, but. Jax went from probably starting in round five and then six when Jordan called, and then round seven you could see his shoulders, and round eight he got drafted and everything just released. Rangers select Jax Biggers, a shortstop from the University of Arkansas. Pick 239, Jax Biggers to the Texas Rangers. That, that's not an eighth round name. That might be a first round name. That is a you're, first you're taking, round name. You know, single for Jax Biggers and this Razorback. I didn't know whether to cry. I didn't know whether to pop champagne. I didn't know this the two of us. But I had streamers. And <laughs> yeah, we made it special and then we went to dinner. But it, it was so nice having her up there. It was, it was so stressful and like, I was waiting for my name to be called and and she was too, but she wouldn't show it, and she just kept on like smiling, and she was just happy for me to, like, to get the opportunity that we, we had a feeling was coming. It was nice to have her. Like, it was kind of nice, like you see your name on the big screen, and, it'd be, and it said, you know, drafted by the Texas Rangers in the 20, 2018 draft, so it was, it was cool. Um, it was a little motivation to like, keep doing what you've been doing, it's got you this far, like keep doing what you're doing. But yeah, I, Talked to my dad for about an hour that night, and that was kind of the most I reflected on like how cool it was, and um, just doing things that you know I've always like dreamed of, and like they're finally starting to happen. I mean, it it means so much to me that he's doing those things, that he's taking the the value of the things we taught him growing up, and he's pursuing, and he's working hard. And that's what I actually like to see, him working hard and him loving it. Because if he stops loving it, he'll stop working hard, and then it'll be something he doesn't enjoy anymore. So right now, I, I'm, I love it. I'm super proud. Love you too.